A very good evening, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this Advent Wednesday service. And this evening, we are glad to have our Reverend Canon Michael Woods with us this evening to share the words of God. Shall we begin our service by singing hymn number 32? Hymn number 32, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The summary of the law on page 24. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy, and write all these your laws in our hearts. We beseech you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own delivered fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardoned and delivered you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The collect. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when He shall come again in His glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through Him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for the readings. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 to 10a. The prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 25, beginning to read at verse 6. Here on Mount Zion, the Lord Almighty will prepare a banquet for all the nations of the world, a banquet of the richest food and the finest wine. Here he will suddenly remove the cloud of sorrow that has been hanging over all the nations. The Sovereign Lord will destroy death forever. He will wipe away the tears 
from everyone's eyes and take away the disgrace his people have suffered throughout the world. The Lord himself has spoken. When it happens, everyone will say, He is our God. We have put our trust in him and he has rescued us. He is the Lord. We have put our trust in him and now we are happy and joyful because he has saved us. The Lord will protect Mount Zion, but the people of Moab will be trampled down just as straw is trampled in manure. This is the word of the Lord. Shall we all rise for the gospel? The Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 29th verse. Glory to Christ, our Saviour. Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at verse 29. Jesus left there and went along by Lake Galilee. He climbed a hill to sit down. Large crowds came to him, bringing with them the lamb, the blind, the cripple, the dumb, and many other sick people whom they placed at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed as they saw the dumb speaking, the cripple make whole, the lamb walking, and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel sorry for these people because they have been with me for three days and now have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away without feeding them, for they might faint on their way home. The disciples asked him, Where will we find enough food in this desert to feed this crowd? How much bread have you? Jesus asked. Seven loaves, they answered, and a few small fish. So Jesus ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground, Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks to God, broke them, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and had enough. Then the disciples took up seven baskets full of pieces left over. This is the Gospel of Christ. Would you like to sit down? Anyone who has learned to speak English will know that the word Advent means coming. So we might say the Advent of the very Reverend Dean Cole marked a change in the life of this cathedral. Then, when we note that Advent ends with Christmas, we may well think it's coming of Christmas that we are working for in Advent. It is not. Originally, Advent was in June. It was a period of time of fasting and preparation for Christ's second coming. Later, the European churches had a problem. Many of those who had become baptized Christians still continued in their pagan practices. They still went up the mountains for an orgy or two. And so, to make them come to a decision about whether they were Christian 
or pagan, the bishops chose the 25th of December to celebrate Christ's birth. It was the time of a very big pagan festival when they celebrated the sun god come back because the days were getting lighter and the air was getting warmer so that christians would have to choose on the 25th of december will you celebrate the birth of jesus or will you go up the mountain for an orgy because you cannot do both at the same time so that is why christmas comes on the 25th of december and it looks as if advent is preparing us for christmas get the christmas pudding done get the plans and the presents bought and so on it then seemed to the church logical to take the advent in june and stick it in front of christmas because then when the people are thinking about god's promise that christ will come again they will be faced with the fact that his promise made through the prophets has come true on christmas day when isaiah said a son is born to us he was born so that when god promises christ will come again we can be sure that that is going to happen so let us turn our minds toward the real meaning of advent come back into our lives and think about students when they know their exam is coming up they prepare and do very careful revision if a housewife knows that guests are coming she will spend time cleaning cooking and preparing for that visit a nurse knowing a patient is on it their way by ambulance will prepare the bed and our politicians they now know when the next election will be and they are certainly preparing for it so preparation is a common and normal part of our human lives and we notice then in effect that what lies ahead of us decides how we behave in the time coming up to that event and that is important because jesus has promised us that he will return and that that day will be both a day at the end of time and it will be a time of judgment if that is the case it makes sense for us to prepare for that day if christmas is the guarantee that god keeps his promises so the end of time the day of judgment is ahead of us it looms with certainty over all our lives and calls us to reflect and change advent gives us a chance to ask ourselves am i ready for that day just as the student asks am i ready for my exams the housewife asks 
Is my home ready for my guests? The nurse asks, is the patient's bed clean and comfortable? And the politicians are already asking, is my campaign up and ready and running? Advent, then, is a season of the church when we take time out from our busy lives and reflect upon them. And this Advent, I would like us to consider learning from people we don't normally expect to learn anything from. They are drunkards. People who have a serious problem drinking too much alcohol. They see their lives are being ruined, but cannot help themselves. Even when they know it is ruining the lives of those around them. They have one important help available to them. It is an organization called Alcoholics Anonymous, AA. And the literature of that organization I have come to read recently. And it gives to the alcoholic 12 steps out of drunkenness into sobriety, 12 steps. Now, why is that important for us in Advent? Well, listen. Step number three says this. We make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. Is that not what we should be doing in Advent? in preparation for Jesus' second coming. Step number four says, make a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Is that not our proper concern in Advent? I notice when I drive around Kuching, there are certain car stickers that say, Stay humble. Well, let us be humble enough to learn from our brothers and sisters who know from their experience what it is like to reach the very bottom of human experience, to be in the gutter or the drain with the rubbish of human life and be completely helpless to get out of it. We could learn the first step out of the gutter. It is to admit we are powerless of our own selves to change our lives for the better. In other words, they learn from that to crawl from the gutter to the feet of our Heavenly Father and to say, help. We need to see that we are entangled in sin and we cannot by any amount of good works, do the work of redemption that is needed. And you can see the evidence for this in our lives. A very distressed woman came to see me. Women have to be very distressed to come and see me. She came to see me and she said, I, thank, I pray to God and say, 
God save me from the people who come to me and tell me I'm here to help you. She's had many friends who genuinely want to help her. But their advice and their help has led them, led her to be in a much worse state. That is exactly what St. Paul is saying when he says, the good we would do, we don't. I want to give you a bit of history to show how that is on an enormous scale. A long time ago, the abolition of slavery was passed in the British Parliament. It had the good intention to stop the Africans being transported from Africa to be sold as slaves in the United States or anywhere else. It would, that act of abolition, stop slavery across the whole of the British Empire and maybe encourage other colonial powers, the French, the Spanish, the Dutch, the Portuguese, to also bring about an abolition of slavery. But what happened? The Royal Navy was directed to police the seas so that this rule of abolishing slavery was maintained. Their job was to intercept and return to Africa any ship carrying Africans intended for sale as slaves at that destination. The consequence was that any slave ship captain breaking the rules and having on board a whole cargo full of Africans to sell as slaves in America, if that captain saw with his telescope over the horizon, a Royal Navy warship coming by the white and red flag it was flying. He knew then his cargo had become worthless and his journey would be turned round and he would have to go back to Africa and not on to America and sell his goods there. What do you do when you find you have a worthless cargo? You throw it overboard. Many, many more Africans drowned in the Atlantic Ocean as a result of the abolition of slavery act than ever drowned when slavery was okay. Because then the slaves were valuable. Once the navy was after them, they became worthless and drowned. It shows us that even in our best intentions, gathered together in a parliament to make a decision for the good of people they want to help, that turned out bad for those who were drowned on the high seas. We cannot, of our own accord, get out of our entanglement in sin. St. Paul, remember, said, the good we want to do, we don't. We cannot escape of our own accord. And the first step that the alcoholics have in their book is admit we are powerless and unmanageable. 
So one important matter for our reflection this Advent might well be to admit to God and to ourselves that we are actually powerless without God's help to overcome the sin we have, the hurt we cause other people, the self-centeredness that makes us always ask, what is in this for me? The anger that arises whenever anyone takes advantage of our kindness. So, if we cannot do the good we want to do, and cannot stop the bad things we do not want to do, surely we are powerless. And we need to admit that that is the case. And if that is the case, we need to put ourselves seriously into the hands of the one who can help us. To alcoholics who have admitted their powerlessness over alcohol, they ask for a power greater than themselves to restore them, and they make a decision to turn their will and their lives over to God's care. When they do that, they actually tell you, people who did not used to believe in God, people who thought religious people were idiots, they who have an experience then that is spiritual, when they have admitted these things, a strong spiritual renewal. So why don't we, this Advent, reflecting on our lives, admit that we are powerless over sin and then place our confidence in God to help us and turn our will and our lives over into his care. In the Bible, we hear St. John the Baptist cry, repent, repent. The word repent means to turn round. And that is very different from saying to God in our prayers, sorry God, I'll try better next time. Because that shows we still think we can do, that we can do things for the better without God's help. Let us rather think of ourselves being like the alcoholic, unable to change until we surrender to God. I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Watchful at all times. Let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Creator and Redeemer. Almighty God, we await with joyful expectation the second return of your Son, Jesus Christ, as Lord and Judge of all, to fulfill the consummation of your eternal kingdom for the healing and restoration of this contam contaminated world. Inside us from the slumber of sin, with the light of your truth and grace. Help us to rise with the dawn and leave the darkness behind so that we may always be found ready and full of diversity in service to welcome you back one day. <clears throat> Strengthen Donna, our bishop, Nelson, the assistant, Tongman, our dean, and all your church in the service of Christ. May your church continue to watch and pray while waiting for your second coming, that we may be found spiritually awakened and continually seeking for Christ in the scriptures 
and recognize him in the breaking of bread. Lord, in your mercy, give to the world and its inhabitants the peace that comes from above. Herald your kingdom of justice and mercy. Establish your rule among the nations with the scepter of righteousness. Bless the Federation of Malaysia, the country of Sarawak, and the kingdom of Brunei Darussalam. Guide those in the authorities, especially in all endeavors to curb the spread of the pandemic. And wisdom in the making policies to sustain the livelihoods of many. Keep them under your covering and mercy. Unite us that we may find Christ's way of healing, freedom, and life. And we commit also the state election in Sarawak to you. We pray that the right person will be elected. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another until your kingdom come. Stir in us humility, that we may continue to show kindness to our neighbors through our doings and charita charitable deeds. Lord, in your mercy, Visit and heal all those who are suffering from sickness and pain, especially for Dr. Julian Wee, Dengi Anak Dundang, Wilson Tang Enhok, Annie Wong Aileen, Dati Nama Valerie Wong, and Lesun Sawi, who are seeking treatment in the hospital. For Lily Wee and Veronica Pong, who are sick in the nursing home. For Deacon Philip Dennis, Tan Jun Pin, Winnie Arin Michael, Kyo Ka Luan, Mary Rudy Anak Rayot, Winnie Karani, Raymond Morris Bujang, Brahmat Anak Ngumbang, Audrey Sim Meju, Nanta Wadi Wong, Mary Wee Pudin Anak Jampan, Robert Tay, who are sick at home. Send us to bring joy and comfort to all who need your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have gone before us in the faith of Christ, especially for the recently departed, Wellington Tindin, Kala Ilin, Stuart Dawi, Sim Ale, Michael John Gawai Adam, Ho Sulin, and for Lee Pen, Chi Kui Siong, <clears throat> Dungi Unga, Sambai Anak Jati, Flo Florena Karong, Chima Anak Pansu, Kinot Anak Ayang, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. According to your promises, grant them and all who rest in Christ, resurrection, light, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Make speed the day when people will come from every corner of the world and sit at table in your kingdom for the glorious day. And rejoicing with St. Thomas the Apostles, our patron, and all your saints, with whom in fellowship we join our praise and praise. By your sufficient grace, may we, like them, be made perfect in your incomparable love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our, Our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean. Our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Christ is our peace.
He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in His name and share His peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. For our offering, let us offer to God. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The second Eucharistic prayer on page 11. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because in His coming as men, the day of our deliverance has dawned, and through Him you have made all things new, as He comes in power and triumph to judge the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, through Him accept our sacrifice of praise and granted by the power <coughs> of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us His body and His blood. Who in the same night that He was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, He broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. 
He gave it to them, saying, Drink this out of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, having in remembrance His death once for all upon the cross, His resurrection from the dead, and His ascension into heaven, and looking for the coming of His kingdom, we make with this bread and this cup the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Accept through Him this offering of our duty and service, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, fill us with your grace and heavenly blessing, nourish us with the body and blood of your Son, that we may grow into His likeness, and made one by your Spirit, become a living temple to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, from all who stand before you in earth and heaven, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of our sins, give us grace. the body and blood of Christ. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which He gave for you, and His blood, which He shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that He died for you, and fit on Him in your hearts, by faith with thanksgiving.
the post communion prayer O Lord our God make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your son our Lord Jesus Christ that when he shall appear he may not find us sleeping in sin or active in his but active in his service and joyful in his praise through Jesus Christ our Lord amen almighty god we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son jesus christ through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory amen Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shined upon you and scattered the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Shall we all rise? We sing hymn 455, Guide me, O Thou Redeemer. <laughs> 